Blue Nile Mountains are a water tower of Africa. They provide the majority of the water that flows into the Nile River, eventually feeding Sudan and Egypt. But this region is also home to tens of millions of Ethiopians who depend on local food, energy, and water resources for their livelihoods. Our Belmont Forum project, the Nile Nexus project, was focused on the problem of understanding these multi-scale food, energy, water resource dynamics in a rapidly developing region. I'm Ben Zajic at Johns Hopkins University, presenting this project on behalf of all of my partners in the US, Germany, Italy, and Ethiopia. So here's a view of a typical homestead in the Blue Nile Mountains, where we see a very local food, energy, water nexus playing out, all within the confines of a small plot. However, when thinking about food, energy, water nexus issues in the Blue Nile, very often one will see figures more like this. Here's the construction site of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, scheduled to begin filling the reservoir in 2020, uh, which will be the largest hydropower dam in the history of Africa, right in the main stem of the Blue Nile. And now this dam has many large scale international food, energy, water dynamics associated with it. And those are important. And those are discussed extensively in the literature and in policy. But our project is motivated by the fact that food, energy, water nexus issues play out across scales in this basin. And we have to account for both the national and subnational, and even the homestead of food, energy, water dynamics, and also understand that this nexus can cross scales. So there will be cases where a very local, perhaps household level food security issue, it either impacts or is impacted by something like an international transboundary water treaty. And we need tools to understand that to make sure that our view of the food, energy, water nexus is not always dominated by large scale powerful interests that might not appreciate the interactions going on with local scale well-being. And so looking at our study set, I'm just going to have time to talk about one element of the food energy water next we looked at, and this is eucalyptus. So here are the Blue Nile Highlands in map form. And if we look at some high resolution satellite imagery, as young Ethiopian scholar Tomeska and Alemna did, working my, with my group at Johns Hopkins, we see that there's been this dramatic change in the past 20 years. These are dry season images and you're going from situations where they were fallow agricultural fields to situations where there is a permanent tree crop and that's eucalyptus. And this is true if we look across Choke Mountain, a place where we do a lot of our work throughout the mountain. You're seeing a situation of conversion of annual food crops to permanent eucalyptus plantations. And now eucalyptus, why is this happening? It's happening uh, for economic reasons, largely. Uh, farmers can do fairly well with eucalyptus, uh, selling it for, uh, charcoal production as construction materials, also using it to satisfy local energy needs. Um, there are also some complicated governance issues associated with this having to do with land tenure and labor. And all of this we were able to investigate, led by our Ethiopian colleague, Balai Samane, as well as Detlef Millerman at Bonn University, focusing on the social geography of the problem. And now recognizing this complexity, we see that there's a local farmer decision going on it ends up impacting neighbors because eucalyptus is oligopathic and so therefore can affect crop yield in neighboring areas and also scales up through its impact on food markets and much to the interest of the governments in the Nile Basin, perhaps on the basin scale water balance because this is happening really dramatically and eucalyptus is a notoriously thirsty crop. So to study this further beyond just quantifying the change as Tomeskin was able to do through satellite imagery, we turn to agent-based modeling and Davide Bazana working with Gianni Gioli uh, in Italy, has built a agent-based model that's able to look at these multi-scale problems. And I don't have time to explain the model, but let me just say that the, what's going on here is that we see a result here that shows how food security might evolve over time, a period of 50 years, under a situation where eucalyptus production continues to expand as it is today. As that happens, what we see is that households move away from producing their own food, the green line here, but their food security is flat or even increasing because they are able to satisfy their food needs through the market using the proceeds of the eucalyptus crop sales. However, this doesn't account for the fact that there are problems still with the downstream water balance, as well as issues going on with energy market dynamics. And so if then we look at some potential government policies designed to maximize local food security while minimizing conversion to eucalyptus, as the government is interested in doing, we can consider a couple of possibilities here, either targeted extension efforts, looking at the innovative farmers trying to really maximize their use of the landscape, or a broad extension effort in which 
all farmers are encouraged in a way that might move them away from eucalyptus and towards effective use of the land for food production. In both cases, we see that you can have a gradually uh, increasing impact on food security, and the target extension seems to be a little bit more effective. And this is the kind of analysis that we can then bring back to policymakers in this ongoing transdisciplinary conversation about how to engage in these nexus issues in the basin. So in closing, if you're going to look at the food and energy water nexus across scale in the Blue Nile Basin or really anywhere, we feel it's important to recognize the nested and interacting multi-scale nature of the food and energy water nexus. And if you're building tools that do that in partnership with stakeholders, it's possible to build a more resilient resource future. Thank you.